Good evening. Good evening. Kia ora. Good evening. Kia ora. Hello, welcome Hello. back to How Chilly Not. Doesn't like, Chilly doesn't like it when I make that noise. Good evening. He's just looking at me asconced. Uh, I don't like it. Is it a sconced or a sconced? Don't know. Neither. Skant. Oh, well. That's, a, that's above my pay. We don't know. The listeners don't know. Who gives a fuck? All right. Welcome back. Episode 12. 13. Very, very 13. special episode. Well, who's keeping count? Um, big Watch day. Me. Big week for Dan. Uh, Dan got arrested for pissing in public for the third time. He got tasered and on as his As you know, there's a... Yeah, he's got his penis tasered. And as you know, there's a three strikes are out for pissing in public. So Dan will be going to prison soon. But, um, but it's all right. We found an app that can do his job, so... Yeah, the podcast will roll on without him. Good news is, I think the justice system will realise the importance of what we're doing here, and let him take his gear to his prison cell and hook him up with some Wi-Fi. We were going to bail him out with the Patreon money, but then we spent it all on failed um, advertising on Facebook. Yeah. So, sorry, Dan, you're going down. So everything. Actually, on that note, if there's any listeners that know how to um, promote stuff on the internet, um, turns out that we've all reached that age where we can't use the internet anymore. <laughs> We just woke up one day and it's not working. So um, get in touch. Yeah, mine started making the dial-up sound again when I try and work, <laughs> try and work it now, which is really befuddling. Um, um, if you haven't already, sign up to the Patreon. We're up to 61 patrons now. Yeah, and because... More we than mi- I ever dreamed of. Because we missed bonus episode last week, we got a special one this week. And we're going to do something different. But if you do want to send some questions and send them, if they're good, we'll answer them. But yeah, get your questions in. Yeah, sign up to that Patreon. Some um, of, some of my best acts of contrition are behind the Patreon paywall. It's true. <laughs> um, and as and as as we've said, um, being a Patreon, it doesn't just get you bonus episodes. You're not just supporting the podcast. But um, Dan will record, mix, and master your album for you, um, and Todd will strike at least one person of your choice. Yeah, Dom's the, the only the only condition on that. Dan said he won't do any double albums, but he'll do a full full length LP. Mm-hmm. The chance of him not being there or losing the album is about fifty fifty. So you take 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 your creativity into your own hands when you work with Dan. Hey, but it's essentially free because the Patreon's one dollar a month minimum to sign up yep. for. We prefer if you sign up for the higher tiers. Um, we ha- we yeah. have it allocated who's in who's in which tier, and we. Why do you think we don't have more rich listeners? <laughs> <laughs> we got a, we got a few we got a few on the rich side. Is oh, it, shit! Is it We're still talking all this left wing propaganda. We need to make this like an econ- like an economics podcast. Should we replace Dan with like a more capitalist guy? We we'll just start calling ourselves entrepreneurs. Well, Dan owns a fucking house. Yeah, I know. Hey, <laughs> have rich guys. We're Number doing. Five. We're doing this with a potential landlord. Yeah. All right. I've got an expensive dog. Yeah. I've got um, expensive jackets and a walk-in wardrobe. He does, listeners. I can't wait to give us, have a rifle through there when I come to Melbourne. Yeah, I can't wait till you can come over. Yeah, I'm going to bring Dan with me too. Yeah, he's please. He's out of prison by then. Yeah, bring him over. Just maybe the day he gets out. Yeah. We'll have a big welcoming home party from in Australia in Melbourne yeah they might be breaking his um, bail conditions uh, we'll have we'll have a word to um, Andrew Little about that does your mum know about you getting arrested because she listens to the podcast eh <laughs> yeah. um, I mean I was so young she probably had to pick me up last time I got what do you mean this happened last week alright roll the music Dan <laughs> Welcome back. A little bit older, a little bit uglier. We couldn't get another producer, so Dan's back as well. Look at, look at this, Dan. We can divulge all this now. This is what, this is what Todd's been itching to get into. <laughs> I do not necessarily like him, but I respect him. Well, everyone needs jewelry. He's a maniac. Further to him crippled. It, this is an audio podcast, Dom. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Dan? Yo, Dan. We're back. Uh, the listeners might not know, but Dan calls himself Machine on Zoom. You I said that. You said that on another episode. Did I? Oh, yeah. Fuck. All right. Well, that's it. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to episode number 12 of How Not To Be An Asshole. You know what? I, it's funny that happened because I was just th- thinking today, I was like, oh, what's some stories to tell on the on the podcast? And I was like, I think of like one of my interesting stories. They'll be like, already told it. 
and yeah, then <laughs> and then I also reflect I'll be like is that even that interesting it's like fuck I've got nothing <laughs> what about one of the 20 times that I caught the bus from um, Grey Lynn to Onihanga and then Dan to a court of Dan but he wasn't home and wouldn't it's answer flat his out lie <laughs> and then I'd have to go all the way back home and then I'd get home and then be like oh sorry just busy that's rough eh what was he um, doing Hey, I was thinking... Hour and a half yeah, each way, Dan. Listeners might, have, listeners might have guessed by now, but there's we don't have a guest today. No, I guess um, City's got some drama going on. And didn't elaborate, <laughs> so it could mean anything. Um, yeah, I, ho- I hope he's okay. But do you know what I was thinking might be fun? What's that, Todd? Um, well, I, I, I want to do an introduction for you, Dom. No, for fuck's sake. As sorry, no, at first I'm sick, I've got to put up this shit... Okay, so today's co-host is um, Dominic Hoey. He's an author, writer. He's got a disease and a dog, and he um, thinks that if you wake up before 11 a.m., that's how you get sick. It's true. I can read a poem about that later if you want. Do you want to intro Dan? Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> Dan Morberries um, is a studio engineer, a man of mystery. He has tiny little arms, but big ideas and a big heart. <laughs> And he wants to make a difference in the world when he's not recording rappers and standing them up and making them catch the bus all the way to Onihanga and then back again, fuming, regretting their life choices. He's um, feeding the poor. Dan Morberries, ladies and gentlemen. Fuck, that was so good off the cuff. Thank you. Why do you, why do I, I usually end up, oh, it's because I can, I'm better at pronouncing names. I can eh? never pronounce anyone's name, so. Yeah, yeah. but it's a shame because, well, perhaps we'll work out a system. Yeah, well, well, you just, can say their name, yeah, and I'll, I just, I'll throw it to you. Yeah, I just say the name, and then you make up some bullshit about it. To be them. fair, I am pepped up on hay fever drugs, so it might not always be that good. All right, can you do me now? All right. All the way from Taranaki, the man with the giant head and even <laughs> bigger ideas, <laughs> hater of dogs, lover of annoying intros, likes a snack, Big man, but eats like a bird. That's the things that people might not know. Is that Todd eats like a like a child, like a small, <laughs> emaciated child. He picks at his food. He doesn't have proper meals. It's really frustrating when you hang out with him too, because you say, "I'm fucking hungry." He says, "I'm not hungry. Just eat a peanut. I've had a peanut four hours ago, and I'm and full. I'm full of power." Um, used to love punching people. Doesn't do it anymore, but still loves it, and will probably return to it at some point. Maybe he'll punch you, dear listener. Introducing Toby Williams. Hey, thanks. It's good. It's real good to be back on the um, <clears throat> podcast. Yeah. When I was sitting in traffic on the way back today, um, I guess it just cancelled because of drama. And I had hay fever and I thought, you know what I feel like doing? It's talking. <laughs> talking for an hour about nothing. <laughs> um, drama's pretty vague, eh? Do you want to speculate as to what it might have been? Um, I don't want to upset him, but I, it could be anything with him. It could be, like, business-related. Um. Mm could have murdered oh. someone and anything in between those two things yeah possibly it is business related because i everyone and the victoria, world's collapsing yeah and like victoria looked like it was progressing and then they got a lot of cases yesterday or today and now, yeah i heard this community transmission again yeah everyone's freaking out again but you know what's funny is from the enormous blm march 15 20 000 people there's been no cases are linked to the march and i made a correlation there i was like oh it's not a crazy idea that people who care enough to go out and march also care enough to be conscientious about not spreading uh coronavirus also right? so you just think it's bad people that spread the virus yeah maybe you heard it here first ladies and gentlemen hey i'm no epi- bad bastard spreading that virus i'm no epidemiologist do, do you know? A, do you know? I couldn't. I did. I, I couldn't say the word epigenealogist before yeah. Corona, and now it's like it comes to me like that. So I mean, that's one good thing that's come of this. I was gonna say that I was gonna let the listeners know that the actual reason we brought the podcast back was I just wanted to see if you could say epidemiologist. Well, yeah, it's taken a while for me to get it. You know, you said it wrong just a couple of seconds ago. Eh? Oh, who gives a fuck? <laughs> say it again. Epigenealogist. Yeah, that's not it. <laughs> what is it? Epidemiologist. Dean. What do you mean, Gene? Oh, who cares? 
I hate science. Fuck, I hated science at school. I didn't mind bio- biology. I fucking hated chemistry and the other one. What's the other one? Physics. Yeah. Fuck physics. I, yeah, I also hated science, actually. And, you know, when you get into high school and you think science is all going to be, like, experiments and test tubes and shit, and you're quite excited, then you get there and it's just shit. I was talking about this with someone the other day. Don't you think it's some amazing and insane that they give students like those mm. Bunsen burners just all mm. on their desks? Yeah, like and flammable liquids. Well, do you want to know a story about some flammable liquids in science? Um, you know how they, at, well, at our school at least, they had like a cabinet where they kept all the flammable dangerous shit in? Mm. And it has an extractor fan on it? But yeah. then someone took the extractor fan off to repair it and then this other kid or no, a kid shot um, uh, skyrockets into there and started this <laughs> caused a huge explosion. Fuck, that's... That was, one of, that was one of the best things that happened to me at high school. That's pretty amazing, eh? Yeah. yeah. You could really... I guess high school's a lot like capitalist society. It's way more fun if you start setting things on fire. <laughs> Another time... Um, there was this kid that had um, quite bad anger problems in our class and we had to dissect a rat and all the vegetarians were like, nah, we're not doing that. And he wasn't vegetarian, but he said he didn't want to do it either. And then the teacher said, you have to do it because you're not vegetarian. And he threw the dead rat into the face of the teacher. Oh, shit. Yeah, so that was that's, exciting. That's pretty ballsy. When I was in a, um, I was in a, what do you call it? A SIF's home, but I guess that would be <coughs> Oranga Tamariki now. And they were, they were fucking mean, like abusive people. And one day they tried to make me kill these baby birds in the backyard with like oh. a, with a fucking rock. And I refused. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I refused to do it and I got punished for it. It was real, some real psychological fucking <laughs> torment going on in that place. That's surprising. I wouldn't have thought that um, SIFs would do things like that. <laughs> Oh man, that place was awful. I don't want to go down too much of a dark path, but I, um, so I put on one of those claims to get compensation from the government for like neglect or abuse in state care. And it was, it was a fucking farce. Like I got some money and shit, but um, just trying to explain to them cause they wanted specific instances of abuse and like you have those, but it's like, that you, what they were missing was the overall kind of effect over a long period of time or even a short period of time that that stuff has on a, on a child. And, yeah, they're pretty reluctant to acknowledge that shit. So, How much money did you get? $10,000. $10,000? Yeah. And it was real... It's not really enough, is it? Nah. And, like, the money just felt burdenous. <clears throat> because I felt like I had to do something smart with it. But partly due to my experiences in the care of the state, I'm not, very, all the way. Well, I'm not very good with money. You bought some fancy shoes and got really drunk for a week. Yeah, while well, other young people were um, learning how to handle money, I was getting taught to kill baby birds with a brick. I'll let you on a secret, Todd. No poor people know how to handle money. It's not just... Yeah, I kind of... I do figure I would be as good with money as I currently am. I'm so ha- fucking bad with it. It's just insane. Do they give you like an apology or yeah. just money? You, you get a, an apology from the Minister of Children. And so so they go through the process, right? And then they like say, oh, we've... They go through all the things and they say, we'll accept responsibility for this. We won't accept responsibility for this. We will admit that you were wronged here, but we won't take, we won't accept responsibility for this. And basically what they try to do was um, abscond their people of any wrongdoing or any harm and just like have, have it placed on outside parties or like employees that could, you know, eat the shit. But, um, and so they go through that and then they're like, okay, so these are your options. And obviously they bring up the money last, but like one of them's like, and we can send you out a signed letter from the minister, a signed apology. And I was like, what am I going to do with that? Uh, this like... Do you um, still have it? 
I do. Oh, let's pray at my mum's house. You should see if you can take a photo of it. We'll make it the um, image for this podcast. Yeah, I don't really want her to rifle through all that shit because it'll probably upset her. Yeah, oh, fair enough. Because <laughs> it's in with all these. Dan, people. can you just Photoshop, whip up a little Photoshop um, OT it. certificate? And uh, another interesting fact about all that Fuck, too was so they sent out all my case files back as well. And in that home, one of the caretakers had just like hit me one day, like proper hit me, not like a fucking, like he hooked me in the face. And oh, well, I was there actually. And apparently I told my social worker and my social worker talked to the caregivers and they just kind of like apologized and then they left me there. <laughs> and they were like, oh, <laughs> yeah, crazy, right? Fuck. Oh dear. Was yeah, this like a, a group home or like a placement with a family or something? Nah, like a group one, group home. <clears throat> yeah, it was, it was sick. Fuck, we started off real cheerful way, eh? sorry. That's all right. Do you want to talk about something funny? Um, I've, st- I've, I've gone off Twitter. What do you mean? I've just had enough of Twitter. Ah, yeah. It's yeah. It's so depressing. It's so just, I was like, why am I anxious? And I was like, because I keep fucking reading the fucking thoughts of people who I don't give a fuck about or <laughs> outrightly disagree with. Yeah. Well, I've kind of, I've kind of made a pact where I was like, oh, I do enough of my life that's political and that's about community and shit that I don't need to engage with any of that shit on the internet. So I hadn't been like engaging in any any political shit. No serious, like I was just not doing any serious shit on the internet because I was like, I don't need that. And but because of events hap- that have happened recently, I've been engaging again. And I guess, yeah, it's like, fuck, I don't know, I prefer those just to see funny shit on the internet and not. I, I like political stuff, but I just like, because mm. that's why I'm on there really is because I follow a bunch of activists and artists and stuff who, you yeah. know, like something will happen and be like, oh, what does this person think about that? Or like, yeah. Or, you know, like, I don't totally agree with that. I wonder what, the, you know, and you sort of get like a range of views. And I think that it's been mm. really, I've learned a lot, but fuck man, some people and, and sometimes it's people you really like as well. And, but they're just like, yeah, not good at the internet. Yeah, hard art. I think, um, yeah, it's a real good way to stay informed. Like, you know, heaps of the BLM coverage has, mm. died, has died down in mainstream media, but Twitter is, like, full of it. Like, you can stay updated with what's going on there, and there's still crazy shit going on. Like, what happened in Washington today? All the, or yesterday, all the press got told to, like, get out of the area, and, yeah... Like a real and like some real unprecedented move, apparently. I guess the trick to do would be to start another account and only follow those ah, people. Yeah, yeah, it's not the worst idea. Or you can just use our um, how not to be an asshole account because they can, you know, we only have to really follow people that come on the come on the show. Yeah, true that. This is it. it I'm presuming we like everyone that comes on the show. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Fuck it. But I've got too much social media in my life anyway. Yeah. I was with some Australians on the weekend. And um, they, I don't know who the band was, but have you heard of, you guys heard of that Australian band, Sticky Fingers? No. No. I'd... Oh. You can, you, you can tell how terrible they are by their name. But um, the, the, so someone was playing a song and then there was some dispute because apparently the singer got me too and it got into quite a heated debate and I was just sitting there like, this, is, this would be a real easy one for me. Like I couldn't understand anyone wanting to die on the Sticky Fingers Hill because it was garbage. Yeah. So I did raise the point, I was like, Whilst I don't condone the actions of the singer and I find, and I have a problem with that personally, perhaps we could just make this simple and look at the fact that the band sucks and that's a good reason not to listen to them. But How'd that go down? Yeah, they weren't really trying to hear that. 
Really? Yeah, there was some AFL on the TV as well at the same oh time. I was really, I was really embedded. I don't, I don't miss that side of Australia. The terrible music and the sports and, and how everyone likes fucking AFL, like the whole country. Well, mostly Victoria, but I, other states as well. Well, no, well, but everyone, do you know what I mean? It's not like in New Zealand, you're not going to go to a fucking protest or you're not going to go to like an arts event and there's not going to be people that like the fucking rugby there. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck rugby's a real blight on New Zealand. I used to like it and fuck, I think the, that massive run National had really killed off any fucking support I had for the All Blacks. Fucking bastards. Ah, bastards, eh? Yeah. Hey, um... I figured, since we don't have a guest dom, I've actually been hit up by a couple of listeners in person. So personal friends of mine who listen to the podcast and they're like, oh, one of them's like, I'm going to sign up for the Patreon, then i got a good question for dom. And the other one is a patron, but they haven't asked the question yet. So do you want me to hit you with some... Yeah, hit me some questions. I wonder if I'm ruining it for the, for the listener who wanted to ask a question. Oh, fuck, they can think of another one, eh? Hard out. There's, there's more than one question in the world. Okay. Do you want to start with the more sombre or the funnier one? Funnier one, please. Okay, good. Um, so my friend Marcel, shout out to Marcel. Sounds like he listens quite a lot. But he was wanting to inquire about the tooth story. Have we not told us on the podcast? Nah, I don't think so. All right. Um, <laughs> so many moons ago, I was working in a shoe shop in Melbourne with um, my friend Mel. And I would have been probably 31. And she was 18, but she was the manager. But oh, as you she can was Im- just a kid, eh? Yeah, but as you can imagine, that we didn't really pay much mind to <laughs> anything she said or anything. You know, like, because it was a shitty job and the boss was a creep and... <laughs> Also, anyway, Mel didn't actually care either. Mel didn't really go for it. But she's just like, yeah. can you not steal in front of me, please? I was like, well, don't watch them when I'm stealing. But, um, <laughs> and then one of the other co-workers came in and he was like, oh, man, I just had my tooth out. And I was like, can I have it? And he's like, yeah, all right, that's weird. And then I took it and I was living with Mel and her boyfriend at the time. And so I went into their room and I put the tooth under the bottom sheet Um and then I was sort of waiting for something to happen and nothing happened for a few days and I f- forgot about it. And then one night I was lying in bed with my girlfriend and, um, and I heard this, oh my God, oh my God, check your mouth, check your mouth. <laughs> and because um, and, and I told my girlfriend what I'd done and she was just, we were both in hysterics and we were just <laughs> screaming and then it just went dead silent. And then I heard this, dug, 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 and then a knock on my door. I'm like, Dominic, do you know anything about this? And they were holding the tooth. I said, no. Um, That's a tough story. The funny part, another funny part of that story, though, is that so Mish woke up and found the tooth during the night and checked his mouth and then just went back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> like, he didn't... Check your mouth. It's such a weird thing to do. Like, as if you yeah. don't notice that your fucking tooth's falling out. <laughs> yeah, and, um, but he didn't wake Mal up to check if she was missing a tooth. <laughs> Because I thought, like, I thought the joke would be, you're like, oh, my God, someone's yeah. tooth's come out in their bed. Not, yeah. like, my tooth has come out and I haven't noticed. Yeah. Well, maybe they... Imagine, fuck, it'd be even more perfect if they had that dream where all your teeth fall out that night. Mm. Yeah, no, that was, that was probably the height of practical jokes. Yeah, that one went better than you could have imagined. What about the mouse? Do you know Oh, yeah, like one time um, <laughs> I've, there was a dead mouse in the kitchen and um, my flatmate was wearing quite baggy jeans and I just dropped the dead mouse into his back pocket and I'm sure that he noticed because he kind of turned around and was like, what's that? And I was laughing and I didn't think anything more of it. And then about a week later, he found the dead mouse in his back pocket but it was completely flat like he'd um, been <laughs> sitting on it for like days. And he was at dinner in a restaurant when he found it. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it had been so long that I'd forgotten that I'd done it. And I was like, oh, dear, Mouse, that's a bit gross. <laughs> See, Marcel loves these stories. And oh, he, really? 
Yeah, he loves to have a discussion about them because he, I think he checks in with Mish sometimes and asks him, has Dom admitted the truth yet? And because he was under the impression that you'd never like admitted to Mish that you did the truth. I definitely had to mail though because I remember we were discussing it. Yeah. Another I, one I did was that um, the cat. Yeah, so I would tell them that there had been a big. Because how did it start? I think I found some orange fur. We used to live down the end of this alleyway, and I think I found some orange fur in the alleyway, or there was some orange fur from somewhere, and I put it in their room, and then I told them that this big orange cat comes into their room when they're not there and sprays everywhere, <laughs> and um. So they got really obsessed with trying to catch this fictional cat and got really worked up about it. Yeah. Uh, have, do you, have you done any practical jokes on David Bench? No, he, he's not really into that kind of thing. Um, Mish definitely wasn't into that kind of no, thing. No, but that's what, made it, that's what made it good, whereas I think David would just kind of get a bit confused and then laugh about it. Right, he, okay. You won't someone, get that. Dan would be someone good to play a practical joke on. Do you think? I don't think he'd get very, like, you wouldn't get a huge reaction out of him. You'd get confused, though. Yeah. Um, I had a good... Where is it? No, no, no. Oh, have you guys seen The King of Staten Island? No, is it good? Yeah, I really like it. Do you like... What's that dude? Pete Davidson. I don't know who that is. Comedian. Do you know? Is he a comedian? Yep. Right. He was in another real good film I watched recently as well. One where he kind of, he's got this girlfriend and the girlfriend's little brother becomes his mate and the girlfriend breaks up with him but he just stays mates with this kid and like has him smoking weed and like just going to parties and shit. And he, he, he's, the two roles I've seen him in, he essentially plays the same character, just like a dropkick, like mid-twenties year old guy but there's something about this dude that like does he remind you of people you know Dan? Hmm no kind of I, know, I think I know what you mean yeah because there's something real likeable about him I was like I think he, he reminds to, me um, of... I don't know this is not that interesting but he used to date Ariana Grande yeah from that meme right where it's like me men who need therapists right uh, I'm not I don't sure know what that. you're talking about another one I've been rewatching the X Files. Yeah, how's that going? It's good. Um, one thing is that Mulder's way hornier than I remember. He's like always watching porn and like he's got porn oh, all over his X Files office and shit. Hard out. Really? There's one scene in the second <laughs> season where it starts off and he's flicking. He's like watching porn and rewinding it, but you can't see it. You can just hear the sound, and then like he gets a call to go and investigate like a monster or something, and he has to leave. Really? Yeah, right. Yeah, and there's another one where there's like woman like ring up and leave, you know, like like this woman rings up and leaves a message on his answer phone and is like, Moldy, you stood me up for our dinner and he's like oh. Do you do you remember he was in that um he does look like a horny little The Red creep. Shoe Diaries. Yeah, yeah, so I wonder if some of it is a play on because I I have never seen that, but I imagine that because it was right X Files was right after that. And so yeah. I wonder if it's sort of like a play on some of that stuff. Right. Yeah, there's, uh, for, for people who don't know what we're talking about, on Sky, what Sky channel was it? I don't know. There'd be soft porn on Sky anyway, like after midnight. Um, and there was one like that always played called Red Shoe Diaries and David, is his name David Duchovny? Yeah. Yeah, he was, he starred in one little soft porn. Actually. Yeah. But he, he, he was like the host, like the kind of, not the host, but he was like the character that combined, that linked everything together, wasn't he? Mm. Like it wasn't just a one-off role. Nah, yeah, he was the star of... He was the Red Shoe the, Diary. Yeah. That's Pretty cool. wild. Like his career must have been looking too shit hot back at that point. And I think then, he was pretty young when he did the X-Files though. But mm. anyway, to any listeners that haven't seen the X-Files, definitely recommend it. It's like shitty it's, enough that you don't have to pay all your attention, but it's good enough that you can kind of keep going. Because it was really? kind of the beginning, I guess, along with Twin Peaks of prestige television. Like, like it was the first TV show I remember watching that had, that wasn't, that of like those American shows that had a bit of an arc, even though the arc doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mean, obvi- I have no fond memories of X-Files, but I guess I didn't really watch it at the time, I don't think. I got, um, Jane Deasy recommended an Australian show to me called Rake yesterday. Rake? 
Yeah. Is it good? Don't know. I haven't watched it yet. I might have a jam tonight. Do you want to hear this poem I wrote about the early birds, about getting up early? Yes, please. Yes. Right. It's called Early Birds Eat Worms. It's for the zine that I'm doing with Josh Solomon, mm. which should be out some point this year, hopefully. Um, early Birds Eat Worms. My ex used to say nothing good ever happens between 2 a.m. and 10 a.m. She was trying to explain how the dawn didn't desire watching me sharing my dinner with the footpath, sanity stuffed in my pockets with my debts yelling about mothers or money or some shit. But the feeling is mutual, I hate mornings, alarm clocks, bad breath, silent and confused in the kitchen, a cup of coffee strong as the urge to chuck my life in the recycling bin, hunters and or gatherers preparing to perform the ritual, throwing ourselves to the rapids, stay busy, lest we learn the last names of our passions. Mornings were invented by the government to keep us stupid. Viva la laziness, waking to the house holding its breath, the day a whisper like a world without cops, money or bosses. I am going nowhere, bedridden, saving it all for lovers, saving it all for art, saving it all for slow-cooked nights, empty streets, man-made stars, ripping my life to shreds, putting it back together inside out, carving my name into the moon, then sleep, and in my dreams I never have to pay rent. The night doesn't lie, not like morning, sunrise propaganda, birdsong, car horns, traffic, deadlines, dead time, nah. Let me sleep for it all. There, was, there will be no mornings after the revolution, believe me. What do you think, Dan? Hey. That's great. Yeah. Just really like that. That's it. Um, do, you, do you have a plan how to like ban mornings once the revolution comes? I could just shoot anyone that gets up before 10 a.m. You only you don't have to get rid of a few, cull a few of the fucking early risers and then the rest would get fall in line, I reckon. So you're going to be like the Joseph Stalin of um, sleeping in? Mornings. It'll be like a completely <laughs> egalitarian society in all ways, apart from just fascism around when people wake up. Yeah. <laughs> Either that, I guess we could put all the early risers in one part of the city, like they could sort of be the undesirables. That yeah. Do the yeah. work that no one else wants to do. I guess that's where I'll be living then. Yep. Gutted. Hey, I forgot the second question. Uh, here we go. Yeah, so this friend, they they were like, ah, oh, I want to ask Dom about his disease, but I don't want to be rude. Does he mind talking about it? I was like, he wrote a whole fucking play about it. He certainly did. <laughs> Award-winning play. <laughs> um, yeah, so they wanted to know about your disease. Anything specifically or just... Yeah, I guess maybe just a general, like, prognosis. Prognosis. I don't know. The doctor said, I'm going to diagnose you. Like, yeah, probably take a few years off your life, but I wouldn't worry about it. But yeah, um, oh, Nothing shit. to worry about. Yeah, eh? nothing to worry about. Um, and a few years is really vague, too, because it's like, well, am I going to die in the next 10 years? Or, like, will I only get yeah. 75? How, but, old was um, the do- how old was the doctor? Because you can get a gauge of their perception. It's hard to it. tell with doctors. He was older than me, maybe 50. I think the, um, old, the older the person telling you a few years, the worse it is, right? True. Mm. Um, so I have a disease called ankylosing spondylitis, which is a form of arthritis where your body... Um, Sounds like a tropical fish. It took me so long to learn how to say it, I still can't spell it. <laughs> okay. But um, it's where your, uh, your body attacks your bones because it thinks that they're like a foreign body or foreign agent, I think. And then your bones defend themselves by growing together. And so your bones will end up fused together. And um, so when you move, sometimes you're breaking little bits of bone apart, which is obviously quite sore. Um, what's that, Todd? I said Jesus. Yeah. Um, I don't know what else about it. You get brain fog, so you can't remember things. So um, the more astute listeners might often notice that I start saying something and then trail <laughs> off. Um, <laughs> What else happens? Just lots of pain, really, and I'm shrinking. I've shrunk almost two inches in the last five years. Have you actually? Yeah. Have you not noticed? Nah. Yeah, there's a photo of me and Christina standing together when we first met, and I'm almost the same height as her, and I'm so much shorter than her now. Hey. How short do you reckon you could get? Um, Most people lose, but um, well, not everyone shrinks, but but people can often lose up to five inches. What causes the brain fogs? Like, um, I think it's like your brain gets inflamed or like the other theory I heard was that the energy, because you're so much, all your energy in your body is, you know, like the, what is it? The pain, 
I don't know, something to do with pain and inflammation and... Yeah, well, if you think about dealing with pain, it takes a lot of energy, right? Like when you get a big tattoo, at the end of it, you're exhausted, but you've just been lying down. What's crazy, though, how, like... Because I'm in pain all the time now, but the low-level pain, I don't even think about it as being pain. And it's only when someone, like, mm. asks me, and I'm like, yeah, oh, I'm always in pain. But then the real bad pain, you know, is like... It's like nothing I've ever experienced. Like, it doesn't happen that often. It probably only happens, like, once a month. But it's like... I, I got hit by a car once. It's sort of a bit like that. Damn. Jesus. Um, do you think you'll get short enough for me to put you in a front pack? I hope so. Yeah, me, me too. <laughs> this is okay. We could just roam around doing the podcast like that. Like Dan could carry all the mics and shit. I'll have you. I'll have you in a front front pack. Dan on the Dan on the back. Yeah. We'll just. Fuck. Can someone please draw that? Anyone who's good at drawing. <laughs> 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 Um, you found the UD cycle, the, the unit, not UD cycle, what was it called? The tandem oh, bike video. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. I was like, cause I looked for it when we were making the promo to fucking for the grand reopening of the podcast and it didn't seem to be there, but just looking the other day, found it. Yeah. If people want to see Dominic and I on a tandem bicycle, it's not that exciting. Probably. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's way down on my Instagram feed somewhere. <laughs> I go back about four or five you years. You should save it and share it again. Mm. All right, I'll save it and I'll share it to the How Not To Be An Asshole Instagram yeah. account. Hey, I, I did some, since I figured we might be short on fodder, podcast fodder today, I did some research. Oh, sweet. Inspired by... <laughs> Inspired by a tweet I saw the other day. Um, So I saw this guy who's like a big labor head. And he was tweeting and saying that um, people who want to vote for Chloe for the Auckland Central seat should consider voting strategically for Helen White. Is that her name? Yeah, Helen White. Because she just lost by a very thin margin to Nikki Kay last time. And I was like, well, this presumes a lot. Like, this is the first time Chloe's running in Auckland Central. And I dare say she's a much more exciting candidate than Helen White. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know who Helen White is, but um, I guess that says a lot in itself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but don't you think that Auckland Central's just overrun with rich assholes now? That it's well, hard to mention that vote for Greens. Well, I went through and looked at, like, the last few elections and, like, for almost everyone, because Nikki Kay's held the seat since 2008 now, Mm. almost every single time she's won, she's won by less than a 1,000 votes. So it's always been, yeah, really thin margins. But I feel like Chloe's probably going to campaign harder than whoever Helen White is. Nikki Um, Kay got sick, eh? She could cancel or something. Did she? She looks unwell. Yeah. I thought that was just being a Tory. You know how Tories all old and ugly? So I figured that happens to you quickly. You know, like that uh, Katie... I'm um, obviously not a fan of her politics, but I was worried about her. I was like, don't, uh, look, don't look well. And, and it would be such a stressful job. Do you think I should uh, write to her? Uh, expressing concern? Yeah, as a fellow sick person. <laughs> I'll... Uh, um, Because I saw her, there was a debate at university, it was a long time ago now, but it was like socialism versus capitalism. The debate was a fucking farce, but um, she was on the capitalist side, obviously. Yeah. Um, But she was sort of like young and fresh-faced, and I guess we're we're all old now, but um, Mm. but she, it was quite interesting because she seemed um, confused at why people were so angry with her. (laughs) You know, like she sort of espoused some kind of neoliberal trickle-down theory kind of thing. And then yeah. people would just be screaming and throwing things, and then she was like, "What?" Like, I was like, "What did you think was going to happen?" Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I guess you. Well, you're not really insulated from criticism as a prominent or a known politician, are you? So mm. you'd think you'd be accustomed to it. Also, I just want to point out to listeners: I wasn't commenting on being like, "Oh, she looks like shit." I was just saying she looks unwell. It wasn't like a. Yeah, you know, I, like there's, there's that thing where people attack 
female yeah, yeah, yeah. politicians on their looks. Yeah. Um, no, but I was I do, genuinely, I was genuinely concerned for her health. That's I believe you, but I don't know. I can understand why people would find it hard to believe you. Well, you that's why I, that's why I added that caveat to it. Yeah, no, nah, nice caveat, really Thank nice. You. Do you want to know some more, um, more Auckland Central seat facts? All right then. Mm. <laughs> Labour held the Auckland Central seat from nineteen nineteen. To 1993. Hmm. So what started from, happening in 1993? What did happen then? Gentrification is when it really uh, ramped up. Ah, right yeah, time. right. Oh yeah, it would have been that time. Fuck. But it's and but it's since the change, it's always been closely contested, and I think the biggest number of votes anyone else has got in that seat that wasn't a Labour or NAP MP was Nando Tanchos. He ran, he ran three or four times and to give it some kind of, uh, some clarity, Nikki Kay has been winning with around 14,000 votes in recent years. 14,000 or 1,400? 14,000. I thought you said that one of them was like contested by 1,000 votes. Yeah. So how's she winning by 1,400? No, no, no that's, that's the total votes. Oh, it's, what, the total votes? Yeah. How many people live in Auckland Central? I thought it would have been a lot. Yeah, I'd think it'd be heaps more. I guess a lot aren't voting. Um, True. But yeah, Nandor, I think he got up like up towards 7,000 in his best year. True. Yeah. Bring back Nandor. Yeah, or vote for Chloe. I reckon she could take it. Yeah, I don't know, but don't you... They're, like, the thing is, like, is it is true that the vote will get split between her and the Labour... And those Labor. people, like... She's up against not only sexism, but then also ageism. I suppose that they're all women, though. Yeah. Isn't there a lot of young people in Auckland Central? I guess. I don't know. <laughs> How could, who the fuck could afford to live in Auckland Central? Actually, some of my yeah. students do. And I'm always amazed. I'm like, where do you live? And they're like, Grayler, and it's great. And I'm like... Like, yeah. they must be paying, like, at least a couple hundred dollars a week for their room. Yeah. Remember remember when you're young, you're kind of willing to do that, just to spend every penny you have on rent? Yeah, but I remember paying, like, I remember when my rent up went up to 160, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, for this massive room in Grey Lynn. I was like, this yeah. is bullshit. These fucking yeah. landlords. And then um, when me and Dave, um, before we moved into this house, we were looking at a house in Greyland Old and we were talking about it. It was $1,200 for a three-bedroom house. And it Holy was nice, sh- but it wasn't $1,200 nice. And I, was, and I was just like, there's just no way you could make that work. Like you'd so even if you had three couples, which you wouldn't want to fucking do, yeah. it'd be 200 each a week. Yeah, and it wasn't a big house. That's insane. Yeah, it's pretty mental. Um, well, what do you think about strategic voting in an instance like that? Yeah, I think it's important, but I think that that's a cynical move from whoever that was because I don't think that, like you say, it's not that clear cut. And I think that Chloe obviously has a lot of support. Mm. I don't know who Helen White is, and I imagine that a lot of people don't. And then Nikki Kay has obviously got a big name, but then I think that the people that like Nikki Kay are never going to vote for Chloe and vice versa. So I think. Mm. I don't know. I I do also wonder with younger people if they will be less likely to go along with that kind of... You know, there's just been that thing for as long as I can remember where it's like, I want to vote the Greens, but I better vote Labour because da-da-da-da-da. Yeah. And it seems like a lot of people, especially people in their late teens, early 20s who are just voting for the first time, they seem a lot kind of like um, more political and angry and less sucked into that kind of bullshit. So... Yeah. That could be interesting, but I just can't get my hopes up about anything anymore. No, it's a good You know, because every time you do, and you're just like, oh, sweet. But yeah, everyone, I feel lo- like everyone loves John Key, or, yeah. you, you know, we voted for Trump. I feel like, you know, it's so rare to feel represented in, in politics, and, um, like, to the opportunity, like, I don't get to vote in Auckland Central, unfortunately. Or maybe I can, because I'm an overseas voter. No, I don't you, know. you could do party vote. I, I don't know. How does that work, though, if you're overseas? 
I'm not sure. I'll find out and I'll report back. But the opportunity to vote for an MP who actually makes you feel represented is, I don't know, not something I'd be willing to give up easily. And the insinuation that that your progressive or your leftist vote should go to Helen doesn't really, like, I feel like that you should be arguing the other way. It's like, oh, here's an exciting opportunity to get someone in a seat that Nationals had a stronghold on for a while. True that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think the smart thing to do would be for Labour and Greens to go into, go into it strategically and not run against each other. Yeah. But yeah. um, Labour would never do that. No, they wouldn't, would they? No. Speaking, speaking of elections, yes, um, have, have you guys seen the lobby? No, what's that? Oh, it's real fucking good. It's an Al Jazeera series. Um, I saw the one on the UK a while ago, and it's about the Israeli government uh, lobbying in other countries. Yeah. It's, and it's, so they got this guy, and he went undercover. He infiltrated, like, their lobby groups and shit. And, but he's, um, he's also done it in the States, and that series is, like, it wasn't released. Like, it got barred from being released in the in the States, but it's on YouTube. But it just kind of, like, if you've ever wondered how the state of Israel gets away with occupation, murder, all the other evil shit they do, there's lots of answers in these docos. And, like, it shows it firsthand. Like, there's just these people, because he infiltrates them so well. And the American one, some of the lobbyist people ask him to go undercover for them <laughs> to, to, um, to infiltrate, I forget which group it is. But yeah, it's crazy. Like they're just, it's these lobbyists openly talking about how they buy politicians and how they influence media politicians, um, how in the States they are lobbying to try and get uh, anti-Zionist sentiment turned into hate speech, turned into anti-Semitic uh, speech by law. Wow. Yeah. You better, better watch, bite your tongue, Dan. You're in fucking <laughs> trouble. <laughs> They'll fucking lock you up, Dan. But real good series. So if you want to see... The Lobby. If, yeah, The Lobby. And if you want to watch the UK one, type in UK. If you want to watch um, the... Me and Todd have been listening to a good podcast, haven't we, Todd? Holy shit. I started listening last night. What did, did you? you? Think, Dan? Um, I was real tired, but it sounded real cool. So the podcast Jump. is called Wind of Change. Follow the Moskva down to Gorky Park. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, you, know, you know, it's funny. Like, that song hasn't got out of my head since I listened. I've finished the yeah, podcast. Yeah, it's been stuck in my head for ages. Yeah. But yeah, listeners should check that podcast out. It's one of the better ones. I've heard in ages and it's very interesting so it's sort of about I mean the basic premise is without giving anything away is that the CIA wrote the song Wind of Change which is a Scorpion song it's like a 80s German hair metal band you and, should um, you should know it depending on your age you'll know their one song for sure though uh, Rocky Like a Hurricane uh, I don't know the name of it yeah yeah they've got a few hits yeah but uh, it's just really well made, and it's interesting too because it's all about like the the guy that's making it is friends with all these people in the CIA, and I think he's obviously probably got pretty fucking shitty politics. But it, but 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 because of that, he's has access to this world that you know like most of the sort of media you consume that people wouldn't have because you know they're not associating with CIA agents and yeah. whatnot. It's such a crazy insight to that shit. Um, oh, I don't want to spoil it. But, oh, I could, uh, oh, no, nah, it'll spoil so it. So you listen to the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah. I listened to the whole thing in one day, I couldn't stop. Yeah, I, I did a few days. Did you get emotional in parts, Dom? Mm. Same. It's like, yeah. You know what's funny is, like, at New Year's this year, because we're at the same place we were the year before with the same people, and last year someone got to choose, like, the... The countdown song yeah 
and this new year's just gone matt my brother chose winds of change really yeah well. and it's it's been in like my um because the song's kind of funny but it's also kind of really moving as well mm. so it's about it's like about the oh no it came out before the berlin wall came down eh yeah just before like a month before but yeah, so the the song is about that feeling of things being about to change, and um, which How is right. Real. Matt was. Yeah, yeah, he was right. So yeah, I've actually listened to that song a bit this year, and then when you suggested the podcast, I was like, oh fuck, I'm all in. Yeah, no, I was listening to it really loudly in the car the other day. Is it? Yeah, well, because I'm a smoker. If I'm listening to podcasts, I'll wind the window down. Then when I'm next to people, they'll just, you know, it's a bit of a weird... Because listening to a podcast feels quite personal. Yeah. And then I'm like, I don't want them to... Especially when it's it. like some like left-wing politi- podcast <laughs> or someone's screaming about fucking... Um... <laughs> you know, another good podcast that I just started listening to is called Champagne Sharks. I haven't heard that one. Um, it's by this black guy from New York. And it's like really like he's, you know, a Marxist and stuff. Mm. Super educated dude, but um, it's just, yeah, super interesting and just like um, his analysis of what's going on with the BLM movement and mm. what it can mean long term and stuff is super interesting because um, obviously he's right in the heart of it, you know? Yeah. Speaking of Marxism, have you noticed like in the last couple of weeks there's been this huge deference to Angela Davis, which is fucking cool? Mm. Yeah, it's so interesting. That's one thing of, like, the politics that growing up was... It wasn't even just radical. It was just people just didn't want to fucking know about it. Like, if you talk to someone about communism, people think you're fucking crazy, you know? Yeah, yeah. And now people... It's just really part of the mainstream, you know, like... Yeah. Even if it's not accepted, but it's still... I mean, even, even on, like, The Guardian and fucking has, like, talks about... It the sort of you know pop- popularity of marxism now and yeah in like you say people quoting angela davis where it's like i can the majority of people 10 15 years ago wouldn't know who the fuck angela davis was you know yeah some some new zealand personality or media figure just pod, did a podcast with her or something really yeah i can't remember who it is i saw i didn't like, realize she's still alive until today recently nor did I. I. I think I'd assume that she was dead. Well, so many of the Panthers are, I guess. Yeah, for real. But no, she's still going hard by the sounds of it. I don't, oh, yeah, I've been in a fucking communism rabbit hole. Right? Just on YouTube. Did you read what? the Communist Manifesto yet? Nah, that's sitting on my shelf. Uh, just it's been fucking on, dense, eh? Yeah, I've just been on YouTube... Because I, I wanted to get a deeper understanding of, like, at the moment I'm doing the Russian Revolution. Oh, that's pretty really interesting. Yeah, so interesting. And um, so I I started out looking, I, I did it a bit backwards. I looked at Lenin first, then I looked at Marx, then I looked at Stalin, then I looked at Trotsky. I haven't finished the Trotsky one yet, actually. But, yeah, and when I've finished that, I feel like I might go research the French Revolution. You should um, look up um, the Paris Commune. Yeah. That's really, that's really interesting. It's when um, they basically, um, I think they were mainly anarchists, took over Paris. So that's when Paris used to be a walled city, like basically yeah. a fortress, and they took it over. And um, I can't remember for how long. It was for a while, though. Um, and they held it, and, um, and then the army came in and murdered everyone. But apparently it was really incredible, and so much of the, the hierarchy and strata of society just fell away almost immediately. And I think a lot of people surmise, because that's happened other times, like in the Spanish Revolution and stuff, mm. how quickly um, hierarchies fall away, that, that really that so, much, so much energy and time in our, in our society currently is put into maintaining those, and that there's this kind of idea that they're innate, but really is actually, they have to be maintained constantly to, to work. Yeah. Fuck, yeah, bring me to an interesting point. Like one of the docos I was watching, 
Oh, it was the one about Marx. But there was this German guy talking, like a, and this was recent footage. They're talking to this German guy, and he was speaking about, you know, Marx's concepts of labor and proletariat and that. And he was like, oh, our labor has changed a lot. And he was like, now our labor is often when we feel like we're doing nothing. So, you know, being on the internet, yeah. provi providing data, and that whole idea, which I'd love to explore further, which we might be able to do on our bonus episode. Mm. Um, but yeah, that was super interesting. And the idea of uh, reclaiming our labor and it belonging to us because it's been, uh, you know, been taken by the ruling class in a real insidious way. Dan's part of the ruling class, now he's a landowner. <laughs> <laughs> you, hear, you hear that, Dan? I heard you, it. You better buck your ideas up, mate. Well, I bucked. <laughs> yeah, get ready to sleep in and to not own your house anymore once, once the revolution's... Hard out. Dan doesn't mind no. a bit of fucking sleeping in. I, sometimes I suspect when he wasn't there when I came to do the recording, he was actually asleep. <laughs> Probably. If this story were true, that might be true. Because sometimes the car would be in the driveway, but then he, he wouldn't be answering the, the door. Are you, are you guys well informed on the the quarantine uh, bungling, or yeah, yeah, or how however you'd like to describe it? I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that. It's because you know, like basically, they're saying, "Oh, we didn't know, and this is a fuck up of whatever the mm. um, department is who's in charge of the health department or whatever." But like, I knew that they weren't testing everyone that was coming in because I heard from people that they weren't. So it's yeah. really hard for me to believe that I somehow knew, but the government didn't realize. Yeah, it's just weird because they got the capabilities to test. I don't know why. I don't know. I mean, some people were speculating that maybe it's because they were getting so much pressure to loosen things up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That they were like, oh, fuck it. Like, looks like yeah, we're good right. now. Because everyone's so relaxed here now, even though obviously there are still active cases. But, like, you really are through the worst of it, right? And. But, I mean, I mean it, it would only take one of those cases to get it out. Yeah. The general population. I mean, I think that's the other thing because not many people have died here. And I think so far it's only been older people. Whereas I think that if there'd been younger people dying in greater numbers, I think you wouldn't be taking a lot more. Because that's what people have said in um, accounts I've read in Spain and Italy. They're saying at first no one took it seriously. And yeah. then there's that really harrowing thing that someone said. It's like, you know, at first you knew, everyone knew someone that had it and then everyone knew someone that died. And then it's like, that's when, yeah. you know, it so really come hit home. Sometimes, because I still see people like trying to play down the seriousness of it. It's, a, it's approaching half a million deaths now worldwide, which is pretty fucking insane. There'll be nothing to matter fucking early risers I'll be killing after a revolution. <laughs> <laughs> but. Yeah, it's, um, it, it, it's madness. If you, if you would have said, like, fucking a year ago, it's like that that number of people are going to die from this disease I mean it would just seem you know it would just be like oh my god it would be chaos it, you know the world yeah. would come together to fight it and I guess to some extent they have but it just shows how powerful capital is and how strong misinformation and propaganda and all that you know like yeah that no one trusts anyone anymore you know nah well, yes I still see you know, so many people trying to insist on these conspiracies. And like, and, and people from New Zealand as well. And it's like, well, the conspiracy has been, your conspiracy has been proven, proven wrong because mm. they are like trying to get things back to normal as quickly as possible. Yeah, hard out. Like, they don't want to fucking deal with a pandemic. They want it done. Like, um, capitalists want to make money. Yeah, exactly. It's like, because it's this idea, like, oh, they want to get us under control. It's like, you're already under fucking control. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> right? Yeah. Try and try and fucking do something that they don't want you to do and see what happens, you know? Yeah, I saw someone's, like, argument the other day. I didn't respond to them, but 
that was the real salient response was like the thing you're arguing that trying to make happen already exists already happens and has mm. been happening for ages like so yeah should we wrap it up what's the time Dan where are we at hour boom like, you, oh. you, you really, like, do you notice how good I am at doing that very Did good you? Do you just one, look at the, one skill that I have. Do you look at the clock? No, I just know. I can oh. tell. I can I think, tell because um, Dan starts getting fidgety at about 50 minutes. Yeah. I think important to note, we didn't touch on it during the episode, but on nearly the 10-year anniversary of that 15-year-old kid, P. Hema Cameron, who mm. got stabbed to death for tagging, and the dude did like eight months in jail, uh, there was that video that came out this week of the dude who got caught tagging get like that. What they do burst his esophagus. Something horrifying. Yeah. Yeah. There's a video, and I'm sure lots of our listeners have seen it. And I I think a lot of people I kind of know or follow like actually know the dude, so it felt kind of somewhat personal and close. I don't know him. I should state, but I I guess these things just do feel that way. Um, the the kid Pihema who got killed was Māori. This guy was Māori. Police, um, just fucking beating people for tagging a wall. It's crazy. Mm. And, and response from like a lot of the public that's like, well, you shouldn't be tagging. Just so fucking infuriating. So, um, I don't know. Well, that, that, that's that's class right there, right? Because you know, like either you got like. <laughs> You know, like fucking middle class people, you know, like basically um, signing off on the fucking beating or death of poor people, or you got poor people that are too fucking stupid to realize it's like they're gonna do that same shit to you, you know, if you transgress in some way, you know, and that might be just driving down the road at the wrong fucking time, or you know, you might get pissed and make too much noise and your neighbor calls a cop. It's like, yeah. Yeah, for um, it's pretty heartbreaking. Yeah, I guess like sending love to people who are close to to that guy. It's a pretty fucking awful thing to experience. Um, is he? Is he? He's all right though. Eh? Yeah, he's in hospital. Like they fucked him up. But yeah, he's. I think Where's he's. Esophagus, man. Fuck. Yeah, I didn't just, know that was a possible to happen. Yeah, it's such a like violent injury, right? Well, I watched just a little bit of the video. I had to turn it off because it's. I find that shit so disturbing, but. Mm. You know, there's like five of those fucking cops. Yeah, and it's the same week where, I mean, like, sad to say, but that policeman got murdered. It was the first one in over a decade. And I guess, like, for all the people who are wanting change around how policing occurs, that's pretty terrifying because, like, this is the worst fucking timing ever. Hard. But it's just like, yeah, that's a very rare occurrence and but the occurrence of the police abusing their power is fucking constant and it's everywhere yep Dan's gonna do something about it he's not sure what yet and for listeners for listeners who want some deep fucking revelatory insights into policing boy do we have a fucking episode for you next week yep Dan Dan (laughs) is a Dan only episode yeah. You must have had some run-ins with the cops when you were a drug addict, Dan. Uh, no. You didn't have any? I was young. What were you doing when you were young? I bet you were doing a lot of petty crime. Pretty much. Skateboarding? What, what kind of things? Dumb stuff. Like, like, oh, you used to be uh, a professional skateboarder, didn't you? <laughs> not professional. <laughs> Semi-professional. Uh, not, not many people know, but Dan was, like, at one time considered the best vert skater in all of you. <laughs> All of New Zealand. That's me. How about Jeff, Jeff Sanders? They called him the they Tony call, Hawk of Nelson. They called yeah. me Andrew Morrison. Oh, yeah, I remember that guy. What else did he get arrested for? Pissing in public? Shit. Probably. My friend got tased for pissing in public in you, Auckland. You did? Did you? No, my friend got tased oh. for pissing on the, in public. On the dick? <laughs> nah. I wish. Mm. Um... True, Dan. I wonder if we can find your criminal record online. You can, eh? I've got 
I've got mine, but that's not Dan's, obviously. I wonder if I... Uh, oh, I know what I could do. I could put you in for a police check for work and then figure out... They'll tell me all your crimes. True. Yeah. you got to pay for it, though. It's not that much, I don't think. I'd be worth, I'd be willing to pay for it. Get to the bottom yeah. of what he's been up to. Uh, they're, they're speaking on this topic, there was... So there was another incident in Australia with a cop today where they tased this guy in the face who was, like, kneeling... And, um, just some normal shit to do. Yeah, yeah. He was just like kneeling and surrendered, and he tased him in the face. And there's all these people like in the comments now. The new one I'm noticing is they're like, "Hmm, why do you think it's coincidental? There's always a camera on hand, eh?" <laughs> and it's like, fucking hell, man! Like they think it's a conspiracy that cops are getting filmed doing this shit. It's like there's a million instances. Also, everyone has a cell phone. Also, the citizens are essentially the employers of the cops. And it is like, analogy, it's like if you got sent into, you got sent into your boss's office to do your work and he is just watching you all day. That's what's happening to the police at the moment. And they don't care. They're still fucking doing what they do. I think that they're probably in the situation where they're like, they've, they're feeling really overexposed so they're just going hard and being like fuck it we're gonna get away with it anyway you know and just seeing what if yeah. they can it'll yeah. be interesting to see what happens with this that with that case with that dude tagging and that assault that the cops did and if anything comes of that and because there must be a lot of pressure right right yeah. now. yeah well i think fuck cause for another march i reckon mm. or we What's could that? have a have a rally at dan's house Ever, apartment five. Yeah. The ever changing apartment address. Uh, an Onihanga Valley. <laughs> All right, should we wrap this one up, yeah. fellas? Let's get out of here, Dan. All right. Give us the outro music. And the sound of a seal clapping. That I can do.